Well, there's a problem getting refined product to market and, and the market's pretty robust at the moment. I mean, our forecast is for 2.8 million barrels a day of growth in 2022. Um, we're starting to see um, pent up demand from China as the uh, lockdown start to ease coming back. Uh, that's boosting aviation. You're seeing strong aviation growth around the world. So that's boosting jet. We haven't really seen this demand destruction story uh, uh, kick in in terms of road transport fuels. So uh, refinery runs are strong. So the pull for, for crude, the for pull for products is definitely there. And that's being reflected in pricing. The fundamentals at the moment um, um, suggest that, uh, uh, you know, there's a good demand story through to the end of the year. Coming back to your point, this does put the, uh, the pressure on supply. You've had OPEC come back out. Uh, uh, increase uh, their production, but their spare capacity is very tight at the moment. It's really only the UAE and Saudi Arabia that can uh, bring more prompt oil onto the market. Most of that will flow east. Um, I think questions over that supply story, though, are a little bit overplayed. When has Saudi Arabia never been able to deliver the oil that it said it would? I can't think of a, a, of one instance. You know, you can go back all the way to the first Gulf War in the uh, early 90s. Um, people questioned whether Saudi could do it, and they did it. Yeah, that's a good point, Andy. Let, let me get to the next point, because there's some eye-watering, eye-catching numbers out there. Uh, you and I know the team very well over at JP Morgan Chase. G, uh, Chase they've, they've given us a top end now, and this is a, an extreme scenario, of 380 bucks a barrel. But I've just seen City this morning, I'm sure you've seen it as well, saying by the end of 22, we could see... 65 bucks end of 2023 could see 45 bucks uh, if we have a recessionary scenario so we've got a market we could get a very large tanker through 45 380 there's a spread for some of the traders even some of them could make money out of that one uh, what's what's it going to be andy well you know our forecast is for oil to trade um around uh, you know just over 100 dollars a barrel through to the end of the year i think that you know those two examples city at one end uh, and jp morgan at the other um, you've got to pick somewhere in the middle, right? Um, uh, the fundamentals are still that you've got strong demand growth, but you've got all these fires blowing up everywhere around the world in terms of uh, supply, and that's the real concern, whether it's longer term in terms of infrastructure investment, where they all is going to come from in the future. But near term, you have this disruption in Libya now, which is taking out uh, 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 light sweet barrels that flow into the southern med. You've got the strikes in Norway, which is obviously affecting um, uh, the Atlantic Basin and also uh, European uh, refiners. And then you have other smaller fires, Ecuador and the big one, of course, which is Russia, which isn't going away any, uh, anytime soon. So again, I think this concern at both ends is really to do with uh, supply. Um, Andy, on top of this, we've now got industrial action in Norway. And uh, I think what Norway is responsible for about 20, 25 percent of EU and uh, UK gas at this point. Very high percentage for the UK, actually. Something like 60 percent, I believe. Um, what do you think happens in this scenario? How painful is it going to be for the recipients of this gas? The UK, it seemed to me, thought it was somewhat insulated from the reduction in Russian gas. Doesn't look so smart now. No one's insulated from anyone, uh, anything in this world, I think, is the lesson here. Everything's interconnected, and, and you know, that's the case with these Norway strikes. We've actually got the, the barrel of oil equivalent uh, it hit from this a little bit higher than was quoted earlier. We're, we're saying around 420,000 uh, barrels of oil equivalent could be knocked out here. Most of that is gas, the equivalent of 290,000 uh, barrels of oil equivalent in, in, in gas here that's affected. So it's considerable for the UK. And when you look at, at, at the, the storage picture here in the UK, there is no storage capacity, so we can't really stock up for, for this winter uh, demand rush, which is expected. Uh, Europe as a whole uh, uh, storage is, is, is kind of on par with where we'd expect it uh, this time compared to last year. But still, you know, when you look at the concerns over Russia, there isn't a major buffer going into the winter. And if we get more disruptions from Gazprom, more disruptions from Russia flowing into Europe, then you are going to get more price spikes. Remember, we had that 330% increase in natural gas prices in Europe at the beginning of the year. Uh, uh, we've seen a lot more activity in that market uh, over the last few weeks. So it's very tight. That's feeding through to inflation. And that's going to drive the demand destruction story if, if we do actually see that. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.